Here is part three of our how to write up a lab for MYP in the high school. We're now looking at conclusion and evaluation. Your conclusion needs to have a few parts. Firstly, you need a sentence saying, was your hypothesis correct or not? You then need a sentence outlining what did you actually find? What is the trend or the pattern? This may be more than one sentence. You should not be restating your numbers. We can see those in a data table. You might have something simple like, as it got hotter, there was more enzyme activity up to 40 degrees, and then it dropped again. That would be it. Explain what happened. And thirdly, you need to tell us why it happened. This is where you often have to do research. And where you research, that means you need to cite stuff. In this school, we use MLA and in-text citation. You may only have one source, you may have more. But the idea is you develop beyond what you've done in class. Why did seeds germinate better in the dark? For your stated species, of course. That's a hint there for your conclusion. It's not general. It's about your specific example, the species you used and what you did. This could be expanded slightly to include evidence, again researched, that it happens in other species. Basically, that's what we need to make a good conclusion. Following our conclusion, we would have an evaluation. Now, your evaluation should have four parts. Firstly, a really big overall, do you trust your results? Overall, given how you did it, the weaknesses you know about, the number of times you did it, do you trust them? I believe these results are correct. And then we start to break that up a bit. The second bit is a sentence or paragraph on were your results reliable? Now, the reason I have done a big R here is because R helps remember what reliable is talking about. Did you have enough repeat? Did you repeat it five times on average so you trust it? Did you do it once? Did you do it 55 times? Did you repeat it enough that you have faith in your results? Secondly, did you have a suitable range of your independent variable? An example could be you're asked to compare does 5% of bleach sterilize things on a bench? You do an experiment comparing 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5%. That's not a good range because you don't know if above the thing you're comparing to works. So your range, was it suitable for your purpose, for your aim? The third thing we need to do is a sentence or paragraph on were your results valid? And again, big fee for valid. What do we mean by valid? It's about your control of variables. Remember, this is an overall summary. It's not specific problems. Overall, did you control your variables? After that, you would then get into specific fixes. Did you change what you needed to change? Did you make constant the correct variables? Were there things you didn't control that might have messed it up? So these sort of things would get in there. Did you have successful variable control? Overall, not details. Because the details is the last section we have. Section 4. I want a table of specific improvements. Some teachers, some schools don't like it in a table. They say it's not teaching you to write well. I'm not here to teach you to write well. I'm here for you to do a good job of, in this case, an evaluation. I want to know what was the problem and how to fix it and then fill it in. You might know all your seeds at 10% molded. That's a problem, write it down. Solution, you might look up on the internet. A weak copper sulfate solution would stop it molding and allow it to germinate. You might have not repeated it enough. Solution, next time I do this, repeat it more. Is that good to say repeat it more? No way, repeat it 10 times. Are you ever gonna do that? You don't have to go, oh, I don't want to do it 10 times. You're not doing this, this is how to do it to improve it. Don't go silly and say repeat it 500 times because there has to be realistic improvements. No one's going to do it that in schools. So this is specific improvement to your lab. Now good students would make this table before they started their lab and every time they encounter a problem they would be writing it into the first column so that by the time they get to their write-up they've already got a list of problems. 
Now I guess this leads to two questions. Firstly, what if your experiment didn't have any problems? Firstly, I'm not sure I believe that. And secondly, you can also take the avenue of, I do trust my results, it was reliable, it was valid, but here are ways to improve it. And I think we always find those. So if you don't have any specific problems, which I find hard to believe still, then you can look at these are ways to improve it. So you're still showing an appreciation of how to develop and improve, do a better job next time. And secondly, sometimes an experiment fails for reasons beyond your control. You end up with your plan, your seeds will die, for example. Someone else's didn't. So you could then use their data. Of course, you can't use their data table. You have to make your own or you'd get zeros for copying, for plagiarism. But you use their data. You'd need to, at the start of your results, write, I use this student's data because. But when it comes to your conclusion evaluation, I think your conclusion's pretty easy, but your evaluation, whose experiment do you evaluate? I guess you'd evaluate the key features of both. Do you know why yours died? If so, that's pretty obvious to talk about. Maybe we don't. Do you know of any errors that you would have had seeing how it went or that they did have? I guess you have two opportunities to be able to show that you can improve and do it better next time.